Hi, so I'm just going to briefly go over some of the mathematics of space-time. Um, because this is just what we need uh, to understand some specific mechanisms and dynamics um, that result in space-time alterations. So not only that, you know, that technology exists, and we can control and manipulate, um, but we need to understand the space-time metric uh, to understand what the heck we're doing. Um, so, <laughs> um, as I briefly introduced before, this is a space-time interval, the square of the space-time interval, uh, ds, in terms of, I'm sorry, it, it, this is the space-time interval, um, in terms of the metric tensor g mu nu, and it's given by uh, you know, scaling these uh, uh, vectors here. And so, um, these differential vectors, um, these differential four vectors, that's what they're called. And it's a, what this does is it creates a four-dimensional line uh, element uh, in dx in one coordinate system and another coordinate system, and then uh, there's an invariance, a mathematical invariance, actually, that occurs, um, as well as a physical one. So really cool stuff. This is what we call Minkowski flat space time. Um, and it's, uh, oh, there's my Discord. Um, <laughs> and uh, it's, it's with Minkowski flat space time, we have um, this Cartesian form and then this uh, spherical coordinate form, where uh, theta and, and phi represent polar azimuthal angles and some r is just some radius. Um, and we can just describe it very cleanly this way, both ways. Uh, and this is Minkowski. So thanks, Minkowski, um, for giving us flat space time. Um, and so, you know, we, we call it ordinary flat space time. Um, but yeah. Now, this is a really beautiful kind of development that happened. Uh, and I'm not going to go into the history of it. Um, I can nerd out about it. But this is called the Schwarzschild metric. And um, all it does is it tells you the space time altered by the presence of a spherical mass distribution m at the origin. And so this would be like a short shield type solution. And um, this uh, space time interval, this Lorentz variant, uh, can be described by uh, this right hand side of the equation for just as a mass distribution. And so with the metric tensor coefficients, you know, g mu nu, modifying the Minkowski flat space time. I don't know if if you can visualize that. I can, um, I can I can kind of show that later. But but the the Schwarzschild metric is a really cool, um, very basic metric. Uh, but it took a really long time for him to derive. Um, and so, yeah, I'm not I'm not going to get too much into this. This is what we're more interested in here, which a lot of people have not really seen before. Um, which is a space-time alteration, and it's altered by the presence of a charged spherical mass distribution, um, the ordered pair kind of or the set of Q and M. So Q would be the charge, uh, M would be at the origin, and we call this the Reisner-Nordstrom type solution. It's actually a generalization of the Schwarzschild solution, um, and it can be a, about transformed into this. And so I'm going to kind of briefly, you know, go over all of the terms because I think that's, um, I think that's pretty important. So ds squared would be space-time interval. G is the Newton's gravitational constant. M is the mass of the object. Q is the charge of the object. R is the radial coordinate. C is the speed of light in a vacuum. Remember, in a vacuum. Um, and then epsilon naught is the vacuum perm permittivity and so that's a really um, interesting finding um, and, and how they choose to express it this way is very interesting to me um, and then dt is the differential of the time coordinate assuming time is continuous and uh, dr is the differential of the radial coordinate and d theta d phi are differentials of your um, you know as muthal and polar angles so I just wanted to really you know digest this equation here uh, and, and kind of see the form of the metric tensor and the product uh, that it plays. So let's kind of look at this practice problem. I'm not going to like 
force you guys to do any crazy math. I just want you to think, okay? So we have a given mass black hole, or we have a given black hole with mass M and charge Q. Imagine it. So there's a mass, and there's a black hole, it's got charge, and find the radius at which the event horizon occurs. So the event horizon is what? This is the point at which the escape velocity of light um, is equal, or the, there's it's it's in balance with the gravitational pull. So, yes, very cool stuff. Um, this is the radius at which the metric coefficient, right, g t t. Imagine this, where this becomes zero. Okay, on this event horizon. Um, okay, and you can. You may inf in ignore any cosmological constant for this problem. So just imagine this, right? We're, we're ignoring the idea of a cosmological constant. That's a more, that's a crazier problem to get into. But um, I'm going to kind of show you what is what the solution would look like. So we would employ, um, we would, we would uh, employ the Reisner Nordstrom metric, right? And we'd get rid of this term here because CT goes to zero. And just kind of walking through the solution. I'm not gonna. You don't have to work this out if you don't want to. But to solve the radius r, the event horizon, set the coefficient of this equal to zero, and solve for r. Okay, so we did that, and now uh, this terms, these terms go away as well, and we're just left with um, with these guys here. And so um, now we can just solve for r, and this is very powerful um, idea. Uh, and black holes are black hole physics is very um, interesting. But if you notice here, we have some kind of um, quantity here in terms of constants and the mass. We have the plus or minus the square root of uh, R G, whatever the square, something squared, and then we we could probably factor out some squares as well. Notice this kind of looks like the uh, solution to the roots of a differential equation of a, of a simple harmonic oscillator. So just keep that in mind. Make these connections in mathematics. Make these um, make these connections, um, and, and think about the forms in which these uh, equations are taking, and uh, connect them. So that's all I have for right now. Um, I just figured it'd be important to go through. Um, and review um, space-time metrics and uh, Lorentz invariance and uh, start kind of using this language so we can uh, uh, go from lower ground to kind of higher ground of how we're going to actually uh, employ some phenomenology to um, engineer space-time. So, yeah. Enjoy!